Hey guys, so uh, we have another video here from JD Projects, but it's not a project this time. It's just kind of a uh, kind of a show and tell video, everything like that. So uh, what are we going to be showing? So we about? have some interesting tools that are unusual, um, and uh, actually we have one tool that is very unusual. Uh, we've actually had it for quite a while, and in fact, we showed it in one of the earlier tool haul videos that we did. Um, we'll have that posted at the end of the uh, video in case you would like to look back at that uh, particular video. At any rate, at that time, we did not know what it was, and it just so happens that we found out, we figured out what it was. We'll tell you a little bit about that later, but it is one of the most unusual tools. In fact, we've done a short uh, uh, some little bit of research just uh, to understand more about it and who made it as well as the fact that we've not seen anything like this on YouTube and and you know there's just lots of tools and restorations and stuff on YouTube but we've been unable to find anything referring to this so um, I think it's something you're going to be really interested in but in that regard we thought we would start first and just show you some of the other unusual tools that we have sort of as a lead up to this really special tool. So I'm gonna turn this uh, camera around and John's gonna start talking about one of the interesting tools that we have. Okay guys, so I'm gonna start with this wrench right here. Um, it is called the Master Wrench. Um, in 1924, the Master Wrench was first produced by the Lynch and Mead Manufacturing Company of Turlock, California. 1927 the Heller brothers acquired the rights to the master wrench our wrench is made from 27 to 45 and uh, We have a question here for y'all and uh, It's on this side those 13 dots right there. There's 13 dots Do y'all think that it's decorative or do you think there's some sort of like purpose for it? We were just wondering um leave your comment in the video yeah the, leave your comment in our comment section down below this mm -hmm. video and let's say my finger was a pipe what it does is it just tightens around the pipe it's kind of a universal wrench yeah and there's actually two different kinds of these wrenches uh this one happens to have teeth as you can see but there is another variant of this wrench that is uh smooth it has no two teeth at all okay next one is uh these right here <clears throat> These are a pair of pliers. Now, they're called side cutting parallel jaw pliers. And you can see that as we open up the wrench or open up the pliers, the jaws stay parallel to one another. And at the same time, there's a side cutter right here for cutting, uh, for cutting wire. Now, these were made by the Sargent Tool Company. Um, as you can maybe see there, I'm not sure if you can get that to focus or not, try to get but focus. actually this tool was, uh, patented. Okay. Uh, our camera cut off back there. So I'm just going to start back here where we left off. Um, so this tool was actually patented in 1890 by a guy by the name of W.A. Bernard. Um, and then in 1948, the Sergeant Tool Company bought the patent rights and began making that tool, and that's why it's labeled as Sargent. Uh, since 1948, the company has gone through a couple of other owners, and actually today, you can still buy this tool. It's a little bit different. The mechanism is a little bit different. This is the early mechanism, uh, but they basically make the same tool today. It costs about 50 bucks. <clears throat> Okay, guys, so this next one is, I think, is pretty interesting. It's that behemoth of a wrench right there. This is called the Hawkbill Double-Sided Jaw Wrench. It was made by the Bemis & Call Company in Springfield, Massachusetts, between 1856 and 1900. I did, the, I did a full restoration on this, um, but that was before we did videos, and... Uh, um, I redid the whole thing, cleaned it up, made, uh, redid the handle, and, uh, well, Dad redid the handle, so, uh, this is a really interesting wrench. It takes a while, but as you loosen this nut, I mean, if it just goes to the top of the handle, you can't fit a very big pipe in there. So what this thing does is it can actually twist over the handle all the way down to right there, so you can really get on some big stuff, so...
That's one of the coolest uh, monkey wrenches I've seen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, next tool that we have that's sort of unusual is this one. We got this in a tool grab um, that we made. We, we buy lots of tools um, from uh, different places when we get a chance. And so we get all kinds of, you know, things. And sometimes you get really cool things like this one. So it looks like maybe that somebody has bent this, but it's it not. I mean, it, it was bought, it was made like this. And this is called an electrolyte starter and manifold wrench. Um, now, the, the electrolyte company was in Defiance, Ohio. And I want to see if I can get this close enough that you can see. Okay. You can see Defiance. Now, between the last E where John is pointing... If you look very closely, there is another E there between the between the E you can see and the O in Ohio. Okay, uh, the Defiance Tool Company had a lot of trouble. Uh, they had trouble with their casting, and as you can, it, there are casting mark problems here. Uh, you can see where it was kind of rough. The, the The texture of the tool itself is rough. Okay, and and they oftentimes had misspellings that they had to try to wipe out after the tool was made. And here's a case of that with this particular E. And so this is kind of an unusual tool in that regard. Now, this tool was made between in the 1930s or 40s. And uh, but because by in the 1950s and 60s, uh, the electrolyte company started working with SK tools, which is... Um, which is uh, Sherman and Clove. Uh, that's what SK stands for. Pretty good tool maker. And uh, their quality of their tool went way up at that point. But at this point in time, the, uh, the tool itself is really rough. So it, it was definitely a 30s to 40s tool. And the fact that it doesn't have any references to SK on it. So <clears throat> it is for a 7000 series starter and manifold, whatever. Right. So the, the, it's bent for that purpose. Yep. Okay, so... What's another one? Six punch leather. The six punch. Yep. Okay. So this is a six punch mm -hmm. leather punching tool. While I read, you can, while I talk, you can oh, okay. show them that. Um, between 1838 and 1916, the W.M. Johnson Company made these. Um, looking... Um, looking at the stamp here. So I'm going to kind oh, of yeah. get up as close as we Looking can. Looking at the stamp quality, um, there's six punches instead of four. It has a very... Um, so six punches instead of four. There's six punches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The stamp quality is quite fine. It's not very... Yeah, it's it's very good. Uh huh. And this tool is probably made between 1900 and 1916. Yeah, because the company went out of business in 1916, didn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, and their older version doesn't look like this. There's differences. Right. Or so we're pretty we're pretty sure that this is a early 1900s, which would be towards the end of the career of that of that company. But um, we got this in a tool haul as well, and since we're we we make a lot of leather products, uh, it's always it always comes in handy for us. Oh, this one's next. For ah. you. So this one right here, this is a. This is a screwdriver that's got a leverage arm that f folds down. Um, and uh, the um, <clears throat> this actually was made by the Swallow Airplane Company. Um, and uh, the company was in business between 1920 and 1956. I found this tool. We used to own a farm back in Arkansas. It was a little 40 acre place. And I was just out in one of the fields one day kicking around and I literally kicked that up out of the dirt. And um, so who knows how long it's laid there. Um, um, it, it, it's, it's been abused. You can see there's a lot of mushrooming on the end of the handle. Um, but it's kind of cool that we found it. We, they, the, the, they, there are late versions of this that exist. Um, don't know exactly when this one was made, but it would have been made sometime between about 1945 because that's when it was patented. That's when this design was patented. So sometime between 1945 and probably about 1980. Uh, but I'm thinking that probably it is probably the earlier rather than later, just looking at the, the condition that the tool is in. It's very well used. It's worn. The end of the, 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 the screwdriver head is really, really worn. 
So, anyway. You probably can't see it, but in the middle of the handle, right above my thumb, that's where the name is. Yeah. And uh, it also had a really cool feature where you could replace the blades and the the shafts and stuff with the different blades. And there's a little set screw right there that you can take, take That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, so. so. Saw. Okay, guys. So, as you can see here, what we have is an old saw set. This, this thing is used to put the angle of the teeth onto the, onto the saw blade like that. It's supposed to bend the teeth. Okay, so this is a Trojan saw set um, made by the Riverside Tool Company. Um, this one is a copy of the Moral Saw Set Number 2. Uh, which was patented in 1880. It is the most, the moral number two was the most copied saw set ever. Well, as we can find, that's what a lot of people say. Um, uh, it was the Charles Morrill Company, um, was from 1878 to around 1960. In 1885, his partner died, Asa Farr, and Morrill refused to pay his widow um, his share in the company. We thought that was kind of a cool side note. And, uh, it's, the spring's pretty weak, um, now. I think it's been used quite a bit. I don't know, but, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, uh, on to you. <clears throat> okay, so the last thing we'll talk about before we get to our main event are some of these tools right here. Now, I'm just gonna... I'll just show this one right here, for instance. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, uh, you can. You can see that. So this circle out here is actually a C, okay? And then there's an H and an I on the inside. And so that is the that is the mark for the uh, International Harvester Company. And so they made a lot of stuff, but you know they made uh, they made uh, uh, plows and tractors and all that kind of stuff. And that's what this is. This is a tool for a farm implement. Now, whether it was for a tractor or for maybe a plow or a, or a spreader or, you know, something like that, a disc, I don't really know. We don't have that kind of uh, knowledge. Um, but it is, it's a, it's a cast tool and it has, you know, it's, it's really one of the early, like, you know, early uh, 20th century multi-tools. Okay. Same kind of goes. For and then the same two. thing goes for these two as well. We don't really have much knowledge. I actually believe I did find a little bit out about this one. This one actually went to a uh, to a plow. Um, so this was an adjustment tool for a plow. Uh, now the other thing about these things is that some of the tools were actually that looked just like this were used. Uh, they they the buggy companies. Um, back in the day, they made the they made tools like this for adjusting and for doing minor repairs on buggies um, and whatnot. So we think that these are probably all um, farm tools. They came from uh, um, John's grandfather, and so uh, uh, pretty much sure that they are that. But anyway, they're kind of unusual. Probably not worth a lot of money, but they are they are unusual. Okay. Now, let's go to our final tool, and I hope you stuck around to see this, because this is the most unusual tool that we have. Now, there it is. You can bring it up a little bit closer. There you go. Now, what we'd like for you to do is just take a second and pause the video and go to the comment section and leave a comment on what you th what you think this thing is and um, because we had a couple of ideas uh, again like I said an earlier video that we did on a tool haul this is where we got it it came from John's grandfather again and we had no idea what it was and he didn't know what it was and so it just so happened that yesterday we were working on making some square head nails and John as his manner is sometimes. I got really bored. He got bored, <clears throat> and so he wanted to start another project. So he started working on this tool because it had a lot of rust on it. 
And so in the process of that, we discovered something very interesting and it led us on the internet. It led us to one thing after another and we finally found out what this tool was. So if you haven't already paused the video, do so. And uh, then we will uh, come back here in just a second and uh, talk about what this is. Okay, so you've had your chance. Hope you, hope you did that because we'd really like to hear what your thoughts are because we certainly didn't have many on this one. So uh, now <clears throat> let's talk about what this thing is. Now, well, before we get into this, I wanted to tell y'all what we thought it okay, was. Okay, tell, tell them what you, we thought it was. So um, we thought it was basically like a mini Jimmy bar kind of thing to where you would hold it under a nail or something and then you would hit it on this side and pry up that thing up. We were wrong. Now tell them Absolutely what wrong. this is. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we do that, let's tell who invented it. A guy by the name of Charles Manzel invented this thing. W. Manzel. Yeah, Charles W. Manzel of Buffalo, New York, in fact. Now, I want to tell you about this guy, Charles Manzel. Again, when you start doing a little bit of research on tools, you find out a lot of interesting things. Okay, this, this guy, he and his brother, his brother's name was Adolf. And they had a, um, they, they did a lot of different things. For instance, let's move this out of the way for just a second. He, they, uh, Charles Manzel has got 15 patents to his name. Okay. The, one of the patents, and I'm going to show all 15 of them, but I want to just give you a flavor of what this guy was like. Okay. So here's one patent right here. And as you can see, it's a design for a body of an airship. And this is dated 20th April, 1920. So what this is, um, what this is, let me get the picture of what it is. Okay. It is a... A Zeppelin. Like a Zeppelin. Uh, and if you turn it to its side here, bring it up closer so they can see. You can see that's an end on view. Here's a side view right here. Okay, that's the, the lower view. Yeah, this thing was supposed to uh, be filled with hydrogen and float around like the Hindenburg. Yeah, a balloon way up here, just like yeah. But I guess the the Hindenburg and all that kind of changed their the plans on most of those things. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other patents that, and I, I have to show this because it is just so incredibly complex. He also patented how to make how to propel the thing. And so here is a picture of the propellers that go all the way down the side of this airship. And then here's the detail on how these things work. And if you're interested, you can look up Charles Manzel. Just go to Google Patents and look up Charles Manzel and you can find all his patents. But it really is interesting to take a few minutes to look at, at what, he, what, he, uh, what he invented. All right, here's so some. Right here is a propeller of that Zeppelin or airship. So this is a better, yeah. I'm gonna show this picture down here because it kind of shows the okay. workings of it. Um, these out here are propellers on one big propeller. It's kind of like a car differential. As this big propeller spins, these two guys spin as well. So it's kind of like a double, double trouble kind of thing. Hmm. And uh, it's very complex. It's hard to get a idea of it on this camera. So just go on ahead and look up if you want to, the airship, and uh, it'll show you. We're gonna show you one more patent before we get to the, the business end of this thing. The okay? business. Now, the reason I want to show you this is to just show you how versatile this guy Manzel was. So from tools to airships, Zeppelin type airships, to a skin beautifying implement. So this thing is basically a, it's just a, a shaft with a roller on the end of it. And it's used to roll out like creams and stuff like that. So it, it, it pushes it down into the pores they say, because that's the healthiest thing to do and all that stuff. 
So this was nineteen. This the, this patent was filed February fifteenth of nineteen forty six. Let me get a little closer there. Move your no, hand. It's gonna get worse. Is it? No. There we go. Okay. All right. So there you have it. John and I are disagreeing on how to show this thing. So we, you can just kind of, you know. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things. All right. So at any rate, this guy was really versatile. Now, let me show you what this thing, bring the tool back. Okay. And let's show exactly what this thing does. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the camera now. Okay. And get the camera a little bit closer. So give me just a second to, to do this. Let's pull this one down here so we can see it better. So let me show you the title of this thing first. Yeah, it, we're not the best at this, so just please bear with us. It is a leaf spring lubrication tool. So that's what this thing is. It's a leaf spring lubrication tool. And he made it specifically for the Model T. Now look how it's designed to work. As you can see, and what's the actual name of this thing? What do you call it? He called it the... Uh... The, the Tomahawk Leaf Spring Lubrication Device, I think, is what it was yeah. called. And it does kind of look like a Tomahawk when you look at it, I suppose. All right. But you basically push it there, put it there, and then you hit, you hit part two there with a hammer, and it forces that uh, wedge inside and separates the, uh, the spring. And then here's the cool part. Okay, this handle actually comes off, and John is trying to take it off right now. Okay, now once that handle comes off, keep turning. Mm -hmm. Okay, you put you put grease down in there. Yeah, he Fill also it up grease. he also patented and he also patented. You know, he made a patent for his own graphite grease to go with it. Well, I mean, uh, if you're going to make a lubricating mm -hmm. tool for leaf springs on a Model mm -hmm. T, you might as well make your own lubrication <laughs> yeah. tool, too, right? So you put it in there, uh -huh. and you start screwing it up. And as you screw it, there will be grease coming out of a hole, hole right there. I don't know if y'all can Let see it. Let me show the diagram. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see here, here's a picture of it right here. So there's the grease down in the thing. There's a hole that goes up through the shaft and then a channel running all the way up into that little crook there. And that's where, as you can see here, it shows a little bit of grease coming out. And so that is what this tool is. And we were just flabbergasted. In fact, I stopped making nails. I was so impressed by what was going on over there that I had to get a part of it. And then we spent the rest of the afternoon cleaning the thing up and all that. So... Because if y'all don't know much about the old leaf spring tools, it was just basically a giant C-clamp with two wedges that you would tighten down, lift the leaf spring up, and you'd have this big grease gun and just put grease in it. This, one hammer blow, squeeze the ha uh, twist the handle, and you got grease in and your leaf spring. And then just pull it out. Very, uh, very uh, smart. Yeah, really, really innovative for... 1916 now one of the other interesting things about this and again it's probably going to be hard to see here because our camera for, for some reason just doesn't focus like i wished it would but you can see there are some there's some writing here the there's a top set of writing that says the charles w Mansell, uh buffalo new york and then it down below it it says patent applied for so this is a pre-patent item right here. Pre-November 11th, 1915. Yeah. Well, actually, actually post. Between November 11th, 1915 and October and, 17th, 1916. Right. So, you know, th this is probably, this tool right here is probably the closest. I mean, we have the narrowest knowledge of what the date is on the tool. Because we know, since the platinum was applied for but not yet awarded, that tool had to be made between November 11th, 1915 and October 17th, 1916. So, so we found that to be very, very, uh, very, very cool. These tools aren't all that expensive. I mean, you can go online and get them for 
20 30 bucks so you know it's not the cost of the item it's just the novelty of it and the how ingenuitive the uh, the uh, the uh, inventor was in making this thing. He wrote like four paragraphs describing what it does. Right. And so one of the coolest, uh, the coolest, I think it wins the race of all the tools that we have. That is the coolest one. Would you not say? Mm-hmm. So yep. that's all we got for today. We just wanted to show you some things. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you stuck around to the end. Mm -hmm. um, if you like what we do... Um, and you can bear the bad camera work and the even worse acting and the bickering that sometimes goes on behind the camera over what shot to make or something like that, then please do, do us a favor and subscribe. Um, give us a like. Um, and please leave a comment on, for us on this, you know, or any one of the other tools that you found interesting or mm -hmm. if you think we made a mistake or something like that because we, we were not perfect. And um, so we've had some other comments where people have helped us understand a couple of things that we didn't know about uh, a particular tool. And, uh, and that was really, really nice to hear those comments because it helped us understand more. So, and remember, if you did not pause the video and went down the comment section, you lost your chance. That's so. right. And you know what? We don't know who you are. We don't know your name, so but, don't worry about it. But... but. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all so much for being a part mm -hmm. with us uh we're jandy projects and uh we'll see you next time Adios. see you